The Commodore Amiga 2000 personal computer is radically expanding the art of the possible in the world of art and design. We're going to show you ways you can use this affordable new tool to expand the art of the possible in your studio or business. As a way to illustrate in 4,096 colors, design logos and packages, to desktop publish in black and white and in color, and as a way to make winning presentations in virtually any medium. Now, look at what the Amiga 2000 can do for you. Hi guys and girls, welcome back to another video. Now as you can see before you, we have an Amiga 2000 and an Amiga 2000. So what are the differences? What's going on? What's it all about? Well, okay. The motherboard in my Amiga 2000 currently is a 1986 board. What that means is, is it's pretty much the same as this later board. However, it doesn't have a buster chip, so it does have issues with sorrow cards. Uh, although I've not actually come across any, to be honest. But, allegedly, it does have issues with buster cards. And I think that's got something to do with sharing the resources of each sorrow port with the cars themselves and the fact it uh, it all gets a little bit messy. Um, it also is limited to 512k chip RAM, uh, very much like the Amiga 1000 and the early 500s for that matter. So this is all a, it's a very early design, this board, and we'll be looking at this as I pull this machine apart, uh, screw by screw, and we change the board from this one into this one. So this is an Amiga. 2000 board from 1986. Uh, it was made in Germany. It's part of the German design which they based on the Amiga 1000. So this is a it's a very early Rev4 uh, from 1986. Um, but it's fully working, it's fully functioning, it does its job, it does everything you wanted Amiga 2000 to do. However there are a few changes. Now as we look at slightly hairy Amiga 2000, uh, a later board. This is a Rev. Come on, give me a clue. This is a Rev. Rev. What? Is it going to tell me anywhere? Should do. Looks like a 4.4. But anyway, this is a later Rev 4. This is an early Rev 4. And the differences are quite simply we now have a Buster chip here. We have a different Agnes for giving us more chip RAM. Uh, the chip RAM itself is based on different chips, so there's a smaller chip count. Um, we still have the precision socketed uh, 68000 as per the early Amiga 2000 board. The later boards didn't have these, they had the cheaper, I don't know what they call them, but the cheaper sockets, you know what they are, the ones that the Amiga 500 had. Now this has extremely little, possibly no, battery damage, which is the reason I got this board. My Amiga uh, 2000 version 6 has quite a bit of battery damage. It's got patch wires everywhere. It functions, it works, but it's a little untidy. Uh, when I saw this for sale with no battery damage, I thought I'm going to get that so I can... Uh... Well, my original intention is to probably restore this 2000 into a nicer condition than it currently is. So I'll be doing that at a later date, but first what I'm going to do is strip this one, pop this board in it, and rebuild it back up so you can see how it goes. Now it will have a uh, vampire in there, uh, stroke 2000 vampire, uh, V2. Uh, we will have a mega chip on there, which will give it to a meg chip RAM. Um, and then we'll be looking at the Apollo calls and what they should offer in the future, if, if everything goes okay. Now one feature that this board has, excuse me while I have a drink. Oh, wonderful. Uh, one thing this board does have is a full length graphic card slot. Now what this means is that my currently non-working Newtek toaster card will fit in there because it uses the full length slot. My um, early Amiga 1000 only has one of these. Instead of having the two slots, it has one. 
Um, so that will be beneficial when I get the toaster card working, hopefully. If not, I'll, I may have to buy another. But uh, well, that's another story, another video, another whole, a whole range of stuff. But uh, for this video, we're going to change this into here and see how we get on. Stay tuned. So here we are back again. Now after a good uh, 15 minutes fighting with this thing, getting the cables to go nicely, I think they're okay. I'm going to tidy them up just a little bit more, maybe put, put a couple of tie wraps on there. I need to connect the LED, um, the LED lights on the front, but let's see if I can zoom in smoothly as though I'm a professional. So as you can see, the floppy drive on the top left is connected up. I think it's the right way around. Um, that goes to the motherboard. That's an old PC cable. I don't know where the original Amiga one went, but hey-ho. I've also connected the 8080 card floppy drive up as well, the five and a quarter inch, which is the one on the right. Uh, I had to buy that cable from Spain, funnily enough, about 20 pounds. Outrageous. I used to throw them away years ago. Anyway, the cable hanging out there on the left, which go, which, uh, which point towards the carpet, that's the USB blaster for the vampire if I need it. Hopefully I don't. I haven't needed it yet, other than to mess about with. Um, we have an external CF card, which you may or may not be able to see, which connects to the butter, which gives me a... Uh, it's my file storage, if you like, so I can update Coffin OS or Apollo OS, and um, I don't need to worry about losing any files because they're always on there. Uh, we have a nice Zorro LAN card in there from individual computers. The oh, I can't remember the name of it now, but um, it's nice and fast. It's the 100 uh, megabit one, not the 10, so it's the more modern card. Very nice from Gens. What else have we got? That's about it. I haven't plugged in the toaster yet. Because like I say, the toaster card doesn't work. So there's not much point doing it yet. But I need to look at that. So if you've got a spare toaster card, that'd be quite handy. The toaster card does split into two modules. Uh, so that's uh, probably a, another video, having a look at the toaster card. So I think that'll do for now. All that's left is to um, put the LEDs on 
tidy the cables up with a couple of tie wraps and uh, I might even put the cover on although the cover does need a good paint and a bit of work but uh, that'll do for now so the next video we'll power that up it might be tomorrow and we'll have a little play do a little stream do a bit of surfing on the internet with it and uh, general messing about in anticipation of goal 2.10 and perhaps even go through at some point on the vampire. Exciting times. Okay, so that'll do for me now. And uh, I'll see you next time, I hope. Take care and have a good weekend. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.